The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. The Sonic Summerstock Playhouse. Once again, our 2015 Sonic Summerstock Playhouse brings you classic theatre, adapted and performed by some of the very best audio players from around the world. I'm David Alt, and with Jack Ward, we are your hosts. Welcome to the Playhouse. Hello and welcome Sonic Society members to the final entry of Sonic Summerstock Playhouse, our summer series where some of the best audio drama companies get together in the summer and recreate some great old time radio scripts with their cast. It's been another fantastic season and tonight is our final performance, this time from longtime Playhouse alum, Gypsy Audio. Thanks so much to Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard and Alex Gilmer and everyone from Gypsy for tonight's gala performance. But before we get to this show, I just wanted to thank everyone for their excitement after last week's show about Bookcraft.org. Ginny, Rob, and I are also pretty excited about the possibilities. A marketplace for writers, graphic artists, editors, translators, marketers, formatters, narrators, audio and video editors, and everyone who loves making the art of ebooks or audiobooks. A one-stop shopping where you can create your own account and add for your services, all free. I know Matt Leong has already gotten one gig for his artwork because I'm the one who paid for it. A cover from my newest short story I hope to have out later this week. So go to bookcraft.org and make an account. Make a free ad and let's get the word out to people. I believe writers want to show their best work at Amazon and through other sites. I believe that they want to have the best edited, best looking ebooks out there to rise above the clutter. Bookcraft could be that one place where your book becomes magic. How exciting, how exciting it is for me to know that in a small way, we could connect people who love reading as much as Rob, Ginny, and I do. And to make the next bestseller, or maybe just get a dream book out there for friends and family to read, bookcraft.org. Entirely secure, the payments are totally handled by PayPal, and personal information is secured through encryption. Make a little cash doing what you want to do at home through bookcraft.org or get that dream writing project to magically appear with help from Bookcraft. Now on with the show. Tonight, Gypsy Audio finishes our Playhouse 2015 season with a classic and one of my favorites, Arsenic and Old Lace. Enjoy. Gypsy Audio presents Arsenic and Old Lace. You can ask anybody in that section of Brooklyn, and they will all tell you the very same thing. The neighbors, the minister, Dr. Harper, even O'Hara, the cop on the beat. You mean those two old Brewster sisters? Why, there ain't two sweater little ladies in the world. Too bad, though, about that nephew of theirs. <laughs> Too bad. He should have... Charge! Follow me, men! Up San Juan Hill after Teddy Roosevelt! Uh, see what I mean? But the Brewster sisters have another nephew, Mortimer. He's a dramatic critic on a New York paper, and he's always considered himself quite sane. Until tonight. Aunt Abby, Aunt Martha, I have news for you. I'm going to marry Elaine Harper. Oh, Mortimer, how nice. Our minister's daughter. Really, Mortimer? Well, we ought to celebrate. Not tonight, darlings. I've got to pick up Elaine and get back to town. I have to cover a play tonight. Well, I do hope it's something you like for once. What's the name of it, dear? 
Merger will out. I bet I can write the review without even seeing it. I always said you were talented, dear. Same old tripe. When the curtain goes up, first thing you see is a dead body. Well, maybe you won't actually see it. It'll be hidden somewhere, like in this window seat. Then someone will come on, walk in sort of casually, lift the cover of the window seat like this. Yeah. Why, Mortimer, dear, what's the matter? Aunt Abby, uh, Aunt Martha, there, there, there's a dead, dead man in there. Now, Luke, Andes, let me say it again, slowly. There's a dead body in the window seat. Yes, dear, we know. You know? Well, of course. Oh, honestly, I never thought Teddy would ever get... Listen, you were planning on sending him to that, that sanitarium, Happy Dale. Yes, dear, it's all arranged. Elaine's father brought the papers over this afternoon. Here they are. All ready for Teddy to sign. Well, he's got to sign them right away, tonight. If they ever found out he's killed a man, they'll... Oh, Teddy didn't do that. He did He didn't? Now, Mortimer, just forget about it. Just forget you even saw the gentleman. Forget? We never dreamed you'd peek. But, but who is he? His name is Hoskins. Adam Hoskins. That's all I really know about him, except that he's a Methodist. Yes, but wh what's he doing here? What happened to him? Well, he died. Aunt Martha, men just don't get into window seats and die. No, Mortimer. He died first. But how? Oh, Mortimer, don't be so inquisitive. The gentleman died because he drank some wine with poison in it. Elderberry wine. How did the poison get in the wine? We put it in the wine because it's less noticeable. When it's in tea, it has a distinct odor. You put it in the wine? Yes, and we put Mr. Hoskins in the window seat because Elaine's father was coming for tea. Then you knew what you've done. You didn't want Dr. Harbour to see the body. Well, not at tea. That wouldn't have been very nice. Now, Mortimer, dear, you can forget all about it. Teddy's down in Panama right now. Panama? You know, the cellar. He always calls the cellar Panama. And the steps over there are the San Juan Hill. He's down in Panama now, digging the locks. You mean, you're going to bury Mr. Hoskins in the cellar? Of course, dear. That's what we did with the others. I don't think you should... Others? The other gentlemen. Wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. Wait. Let me get this straight. When you say others, you mean others, more than one. Oh, yes, this is 11, isn't it, Abby? No, dear, this makes 12. Well, you really shouldn't count the first one. After all, he just died. Just died? Well, Martha means without any help from us. Mr. Midgley was his name. He was a Baptist. And he came here looking for a room. Well, it was right after you moved to New York, Mortimer. It didn't seem right to leave that lovely room empty with so many people needing it. So we advertised, and Mr. Midgley applied. He was so lonely. No kith or kin. We felt so sorry for him. And then when his heart attack came, and he sat there dead in that chair. Remember, Martha? It was like old times. Yes. Grandfather was a doctor, you know. He always had a cadaver or two around the house. Only Teddy insisted that Mr. Midgley was a yellow fever victim and had to be buried at once. So we buried him in Panama. Yes, and he looked so peaceful, didn't he, Abby? Oh, so serene. And we made up our minds right then and there that if we could help other lonely old men find that same peace... We would. So that's... that's how it all started? That man walking in and dropping dead? Oh, well, of course, we realized we couldn't depend on that... Mortimer! ...always happening, so... Mortimer, you know those jars of poison that had been up in Grandfather's laboratory all these years? 
And your Aunt Martha has such a knack for mixing things. Well, dear, for a gallon of elderberry wine, I take one teaspoonful of arsenic, a half a teaspoonful of strychnine, and just a pinch of cyanide. It should have quite a kick. Oh, yes, yes. As a matter of fact, one of our gentlemen found time to say how delicious. Look, look, Andes, I, I don't know how to explain it to you, but you can't do things like that. It's against the law. It's not a nice thing to do. But, well, I mean, well, this has developed into a very bad habit. Mortimer, we don't stop you from doing things you like to do. Why should you interfere with us? Because, uh, listen, I gotta rush into town and cover that play. Do a lot of things. There's not a minute to spare. Are you sure you haven't got time for dinner? I'm going to try a new recipe. Ah, uh, thanks. I, I, I couldn't eat a thing. This is it, Doctor. Yes, I will remember this door. Even when I was a child, it always sounded like in a sanctum. Come in. Oh, Johnny, it's dark in here. That means the family still lives here. The Brewsters were always sparing with lights. Is that so? Hey, who turned on the lights? I did. Who are you? Yes, what are you gentlemen doing here? Why, Aunt Abby, Aunt Martha, it's Jonathan. You get out of here. But I'm Jonathan, your nephew, Jonathan. Oh, no, you're not. You're nothing like Jonathan, so don't pretend you are. But I am. I'm Jonathan. And this is Dr. Einstein. His voice does sound like Jonathan, but, but his face... Have you been in an accident? No, my face. Dr. Einstein is responsible for that. He changes people's faces. I ought to. Now, easy, easy, Johnny, easy. <laughs> Don't worry, ladies. The last five years I gave Johnny three new faces. I give him another one right away. You'd better when my own family doesn't even. Oh, oh, Johnny, I'm sorry. I saw that horror picture just before I operated. It was, I was a little drunk. Ah, uh, well, uh, anyway, now, now you're home, ladies. How often he tells me about Brooklyn, about this house, about his aunts that he loves so much. Oh, please, you, you, you must know him, uh, uh, speak to him, uh, tell him so. Well, it's Jonathan. It's been a long time since you ran away from us. Well, yes, where have you been all these years? Oh, England, South Africa, Australia. The last five years, Dr. Einstein and I have been in Chicago. Really? We were in Chicago for the World's Fair. We didn't like it. We found Chicago awfully warm. Yeah, it got too hot for us, too. Well, Jonathan, it was nice to see you again. I, I mean, if you're in a hurry to get somewhere. Not at all, Aunt Abby. But, uh... Martha, dear, Martha, we mustn't let the soup boil over. <laughs> Jonathan, if you'll excuse us for a minute? Of course. Come along, Martha. Johnny, we have to work fast. The police, the police have got pictures of your face. I've got to find a place to operate, and we've got to find a place for Mr. Spinalzo, too. Oh, don't waste any worry on that rat. But uh, we, we, we can't just leave a dead body in the rumble seat. Oh, oh, you shouldn't have killed him, Johnny. He was a nice fellow. He gives us a lift, and what happened? He said I looked like Boris Karloff. Don't worry, Johnny. As soon as I operate, change your face again. Wait a minute. I know just the place. You do? If this family hasn't changed, and I'm sure it hasn't, I bet my grandfather's old laboratory is just... It's just the way he left it. Ah, good. And when you're done with me, why, we could make a fortune here. In Brooklyn. 
Of course, practically everybody in Brooklyn needs a new face. But, Johnny, your aunts, I, I don't think they want us here. You leave that to me, Doctor. I'll handle it. Why, this house will be our headquarters for years. Ah, that would be beautiful, Johnny. This nice, quiet house, and those sweet old ladies. I love them already. I'll get the bags, yeah? Doctor! We must wait till we're invited. But you just said... We'll be invited. And if they say no? Doctor, two helpless old women? Ah, sit down, make yourself comfortable. Ah, it's like comes through a beautiful dream. It's so nice and peaceful here. That's what makes this house so perfect for us. It's so peaceful. Charge! You men charge! Charge! What? What? What the? What? What? Why, I must say, my dear aunts, it was very kind of you to invite myself and the doctor for dinner. We didn't really invite you, Jonathan. You invited yourselves. Well, it just shows you that I feel at home already. I'm sure I'm going to like it here. Like it here? You, you mean you're going to stay? Oh, haven't I told you? Now, Jonathan, you needn't think you're going to... Um, Abby, um, the dinner dishes. Shouldn't we get started on them, dear? Huh? Uh, 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 oh, yes, 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 of course. Jonathan, we'll speak to you later. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny! Just now that Teddy takes down the cellar, what do you think I found? What? The Panama Canal. The Panama Canal. Ah, listen, listen. He digs a hole down there. Just the right size for Mr. Spenalzo. Hey, hey, that's an idea. What a joke on my aunts. To bury a body in their cellar. But, but how are we going to get him in? Get him in through those French windows. We can hide him in the window seat. Window seat? It's perfect for a corpse. Why, when I was a youngster, I used to hide there myself. Then, a little later, when my aunts have gone to bed, we'll take them down and bury him. Oh, but, Abby, are you sure they've gone out? Yes, they're out there at their car. Besides, we've got to get Mr. Hoskins out of this window seat. Yes, the poor dear. He can't be very comfortable. And when Mortimer gets back, he'll take care of Jonathan. Well, there'll be an awful row. They never liked each other. Martha, I will not invite Jonathan to Mr. Hoskins' services. Abby, dear, we'd better hurry. Yes, let's see if Teddy's still in the cellar. Teddy, are you down there in Panama? Who dares call the president by his first name? Oh, Mr. President, we've got another gentleman. Is he dead? A yellow fever victim. Teddy, I'm afraid you'll have to hurry. Ah, that's good, Doctor. <clears throat> that's fine. See how nicely he fits? Uh, just like this window seat was made to order. Now we'll go upstairs, and when my aunts have gone to sleep, we'll come down and put him away. And after that... Uh, I know, Johnny. I know. I operate. Well, everything seems quiet enough. They must be sleeping, I guess. Might as well have a little light down here. There, that's better. Now let me see. First, I've got to get Hoskins out of the window seat. Not very pleasant, but it's got to be done. Come on, old man. I'm sorry to disturb you. <gasps> Another one? Mortimer! Darling, you're back just in time for the services. And Abby and Martha, there's another body in the window seat. 
Look! Now, who could that be? Why, it's a stranger. My goodness, how did he get in there? Now, wait a minute, you two. You can't get out of this. That's another one of your gentlemen. Mortimer, how can you say such a thing? That man's an imposter. But you admit it. You admitted to putting Mr. Hoskins in the window seat. Well, yes, I, I did, but I... Well, this man couldn't have just got the idea from Mr. Hoskins. By the way, where is Mr. Hoskins? Teddy took him down to Panama. Why, yes, he's down there waiting for the services. Abby, dear, we always wanted to hold a double funeral. No, Martha, I will not read services over a total stranger. Stranger? Aunt Abby, there are twelve men buried down in their cellar. You admit you poisoned them. Now you're telling me this one's a stranger? Well, of course. Darling, you don't think I'd stoop to telling a fib? Oh. Well, Mortimer thinks that he's going crazy until his brother Jonathan walks in. That makes the answer fairly apparent. And Mortimer shifts right into high gear. He tells him he's going to call the police and show them the very dead Mr. Spinalzo. And it looks like his bluff is going to work when Dr. Einstein comes rushing in. Johnny! Johnny! Come along, Dr. Einstein. It seems that we are leaving. No, Johnny, wait. Just now, I tell you, he's me down to Panama again. And guess what? What? Johnny, we're saved. We've got an ace in the hole. Now, Jonathan discovers poor dead Mr. Hoskins, and that changes things all around. Again. Especially since Mortimer has to leave to finish some very urgent business. And now, while they're awaiting Mortimer's return, the two old ladies are quite upset. Jonathan, will you please tell us what you plan on doing with your Mr. Spinalzo? We plan to bury him with your Mr. Hotskins, I suppose. Oh, no, you won't. We won't have any strangers buried in our cellar. And besides, the cellar is crowded already. Yes, there are twelve graves down there right now. Twelve graves? As you can see, that leaves us very little room, and we are going to need it. You, you, you mean you two ladies have murdered all those? Murdered? Certainly not. It's one of our charities. Why? What we've been doing is a mercy. You've done that? Here in this house? And you've buried them? Down there? Johnny, we have been chasing all over the world. They stay right here at home and do just as good as you. What? You've got twelve? They got twelve. I've got thirteen. No, Johnny, twelve. Thirteen. No, Johnny, you can't count the one in South Bend. He, he died of pneumonia. He wouldn't have got pneumonia if I hadn't shot him. No, Johnny, he don't count. He don't count. He, you've got twelve, and they've got twelve. The old ladies are just as good as you are. Oh, they are, are they? Well, that's easily taken care of. All I need is one more. That's all. Just one more. Well, here I am. Oh, oh, please, please, young man, take my advice. Go away from this house. Go, go away now, while Johnny is still busy in the cellar with Mr. Spinalzo. I'm sorry, Doctor, I'm expecting someone, someone very important. Besides, I've still got to write my review. I tell you, Johnny's in a bad, bad mood. And when he's like this, he is a madman. Don't worry, I'll take care of Jonathan, too. Ah, don't you got no sense? Uh, don't, don't you learn nothing from them, those plays you see. Are you kidding? You think people in plays act intelligently? You should have seen the one I had to cover tonight. There's a fellow in this play. Knows he's in the house with murderers. He's even been warned. 
But does he get out? No, he stays there. Now I ask you, Doctor, is that intelligent? You're asking me? He didn't even have sense enough to be on guard. For instance, the murderer invites him to sit down. Oh, you mean, would you sit down? Believe it or not, that was in there too. So what happens? He sits down. Just like this. What do you think they tied him up with? What? The curtain cord. Hmm. That's very convenient. Very convenient. A little too convenient. When are these playwrights going to use their imagination? So he sits there, the big dope. This fellow who's supposed to be bright, he sits there just like I'm sitting here, letting a murderer walk up behind him, just waiting to be trussed up and gagged. You're quite right, my dear brother. That fellow wasn't very smart. Well, he seems to be gagged and tied quite well. All right, Doctor, we go to work. <sighs> Please, Johnny. First, I need a drink. Oh, there's some wine right here. Ah, oh, yes, the elderberry wine, by all means. I pour you one, too. How oh, I need this. Please, Doctor, your manners. Not without a toast to dear... Dead brother! Charge! Charge! Ah. That idiot! He goes next, do you hear me? He goes next! He's next! No, oh no, Johnny, not Daddy. Oh, we'll get him later, come on, we've got to work fast. Listen, that Teddy's got to stop blowing his horn. We promised the neighbors. All right, officer, we'll speak to him. <sighs> I better talk to him myself. Where's the light? Ah, that's better. I'll go up to his room and... Hey, ain't that Mr. Mortimer? Ah, yes, it is. What's he doing tied up like that? Well... Uh, uh, he, he was explaining the play. He thought in the... Uh, that's what happened to this fella in the play. No kidding. I, I, I wouldn't want to interfere. Hey, oh hey. Oh, hi, Brophy. <laughs> How's the prowl car business? It got kind of warm. Lieutenant Stevenson. Did he get you on the radio? He says he's gotten so many complaints from the neighbors, you'd think they dropped an atom bomb on Flatbush Avenue. He says we gotta take Teddy in. And, um... Uh... Hey, why is that guy dressed up like that? Oh, that's Mr. Uh, Mortimer. He's playing. Well, get him untied. He looks like he's choking. Oh, sure. Won't take me but a second. Officer, perhaps you'd better let me. Hey, who is this guy? <sighs> ah, that, that's my brother. You better stick around because he... Don't listen to him, officer. He's dangerous. Huh? That's why we had to tie him up. He's the lowest kind of person in the whole world. Uh dramatic critic my two aunts huh you think they're sweet charming old ladies do you well there are 13 bodies buried in the cellar listen you better be careful what you say about your aunts they happen to be friends of ours <sighs> hey brophy can you imagine with a face like his <laughs> well he, he looks just like boris karloff why you Lay off. <coughs> He's <coughs> choking. Help me. <coughs> Choke. <coughs> choking. Let go, you. What's the idea? You hear me? I said let go. There. That take care of him for a while. <sighs> what was baiting him? Choking me like. That. Uh, I don't know. When you said that he looked like... Hey, wait a minute. This guy is wanted. <coughs> oh, you sure? Sure, don't you ever read True Detective? He escaped an asylum. Why, why that's... 
The way he was described, that he looked like Karloff. Is there a reward? Yeah, yeah. Help me log him into the car. But, but, but how about the bodies in, in the cellar? Bodies in the cellar. And that enough to show you his nuts. Hey, 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 hey. What, what, what about the other one? He, you, you know who I mean, Mr. Mortimer. The doctor. Yeah, he, 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 he must have walked out. Oh, don't you worry. We'll pick him up. Come on. Ah, uh, Mr. Mortimer, you, 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 you'll, ex you, you'll excuse us, huh? Uh, I, 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 I mean, seeing how, well, there's a reward. I understand. But you will take care of Teddy, though. Absolutely. Tonight. I'm Martha and Abby. I know it's very late. But you see, Mr. Witherspoon came all the way over here. He's the superintendent of Happydale, you know. He is? How nice. Yes, and all the papers have been signed. And he's going to take Teddy with him tonight. Really, Mr. Witherspoon? Well, that was my understanding. Mortimer, does Teddy know? Uh, not exactly. He thinks he's going on safari to Africa. Oh, Abby, dear, we'll miss Teddy, won't we? We do love him so. Oh, I fixed all that too, Aunt Martha. You and Aunt Abby are going along, just so he can be close to Teddy. Why, Mortimer, how thoughtful of you. Why, yes, isn't that nice? Oh, and Mortimer, you can have the house. The house? Of course, you'll need it if you're going to marry Elaine. Elaine! Holy Toledo, she must still be waiting. Excuse me, I, I gotta go and call her. He is such a good boy, Mr. Witherspoon. Yes, yes, I'm sure. You know, since we're all going together, I, I think we ought to celebrate, have a party. I'm sorry. But I'm here in an official capacity. Oh, that's too bad. Tell me, does your family live at Happydale too? I'm afraid I haven't any family. You're all alone? Oh, isn't that too bad? You know, Martha, if Mr. Witherspoon won't uh, let us give him a party, at least we might offer him a glass of wine. Well, of course. The elderberry wine. Elderberry wine? We make it ourselves. Well, of course, at Happydale, our relationship will be much more formal. But here... Oh, we're very informal. You have been listening to Arsenic and Old Lace from Gypsy Audio, as performed by the Screen Guild Theatre, based on the play by Joseph Kesselring. Adapted for Gypsy Audio by Alex Gilmore. Produced by Alex Gilmore. Executive producer, Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard. Starring Dave McIver as Mortimer Brewster. Carrie Ayers as Jonathan Brewster. Julie Hoverson as Abby Brewster. Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard as Martha Brewster. Chris Blakely as Dr. Einstein. Bill Hallweg as O'Hara. Stacey Dukes as Teddy. Alex Gilmore as Witherspoon and Brophy. And I am your narrator, Melissa Bartell. For music and effects credits, please go to gypsyaudio.org. This recording is released under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. gypsyaudio.org, 2015. This completes the Sonic Summerstock Playhouse 2015 season. We hope you enjoyed tonight's play and all the performances on our Sonic Theatre stage. All productions, performances, characters and scripts presented in the Playhouse belong strictly to their copyright holders. And no copyright infringement is assumed or intended. The Sonic Summerstock Playhouse is part of the Sonic Society podcast and Electric by Kuna Productions. Any shows that continue their run must have explicit permission from all parties involved. Return with us next week as Jack and I begin Season 11 of the Sonic Society. For all the Sonic Summerstock Playhouse players, I am David Alt. Good night.
This has been an Electric Vicuna production. Casually lift the cover of the window seat like this. Yeah. Why, Mortimer, dear, what's the matter? Aunt Abby, uh, Aunt Martha, there, there, there's a dead, dead man in there. Now, look, Andes, let me say it again, slowly. There's a dead body in the window seat. Yes, dear, we know. You know? Well, of course. Oh, honestly, I never thought Teddy would ever get... Listen, you were planning on sending him to that, that sanitarium, Happy Dale. Yes, dear, it's all arranged. Elaine's father brought the papers over this afternoon. Here they are, all ready for Teddy to sign. Well, he's got to sign them right away, tonight. If they ever found out he's killed a man, they'll... Oh, Teddy didn't do that. He did He didn't? Now, Mortimer, just forget about it. Just forget you even saw the gentleman. Forget? We never dreamed you'd peek. But, but who is he? His name is Hoskins. Adam Hoskins. That's all I really know about him. Except that he's a Methodist. Yes, but... Well... What's he doing here? What happened to him? Well, he died. Aunt Martha, men just don't get into window seats and die. No, Mortimer. He died first. But how? Oh, Mortimer, don't be so inquisitive. The gentleman died because he drank some wine with poison in it. Elderberry wine. How did the poison get in the wine? We put it in the wine because it's less noticeable. When it's in tea, it has a distinct odor. You put it in the wine? Yes, and we put Mr. Hoskins in the window seat, because Elaine's father was coming for tea. Then you knew what you've done. You didn't want Dr. Harbour to see the body. Well, not at tea. That wouldn't have been very nice. Now, Mortimer, dear, you can forget all about it. Teddy's down in Panama right now. Panama? You know, the cellar. He always calls the cellar Panama. And the steps over there are the San Juan Hill. He's down in Panama now, digging the locks. You mean you're going to bury Mr. Hoskins in the cellar? Of course, dear. Why should you interfere with us? Because, uh, listen, i got to rush into town and cover that play. Do a lot of things. There's not a minute to spare. Are you sure you haven't got time for dinner? I'm going to try a new recipe. Ah, thanks. I, I, I couldn't eat a thing. This is it, Doctor. Yes, I will remember this door. Even when I was a child, it always sounded like inner sanctum. Come in. Oh, Johnny, it's dark in here. That means the family still lives here. The Brewsters were always sparing with lights. Is that so? Hey, who turned on the lights? I did. Who are you? Yes, what are you gentlemen doing here? Why, Aunt Abby, Aunt Martha, it's Jonathan. You get out of here. But I'm Jonathan, your nephew, Jonathan. Oh, no, you're not. You're nothing like Jonathan, so don't pretend you are. But I am. I'm Jonathan. 
and this is Dr. Reinstein. His voice does sound like Jonathan, but, but his face... Have you been in an accident? No, my face. Dr. Reinstein is responsible for that. He changes people's faces. I ought to... Now, easy, easy, Johnny, easy. <laughs> Don't worry, ladies. The last five years I gave Johnny three new faces. I give him another one right away. You'd better when my own family doesn't even... Oh, oh, Johnny, I'm sorry. I saw that horror picture just before I operated. It was... I was a little drunk. Ah, uh, well, uh, anyway, now, now you're home. Ladies, how often he tells me about Brooklyn, about this house, about his aunt that he loves so much. Oh, please, you, you, you must know him. I, I speak to him. I tell him so. Well, it's Jonathan. It's been a long time since you ran away from us. Well, yes. Where have you been all these years? Oh, England, South Africa, Australia... The last five years, Dr. Einstein and I have been in Chicago. Really? We were in Chicago for the World's Fair. We didn't like That's what we did with the others. I don't think you should... Others? The other gentlemen. Wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. Wait. Let me get this straight. When you say others, you mean... Others. More than one. Oh, yes. This is eleven, isn't it, Abby? No, dear. This makes twelve. Well, you really shouldn't count the first one. After all, he just died. Just died? Well, Martha means without any help from us. Mr. Midgley was his name. He was a Baptist. And he came here looking for a room. Well, it was right after you moved to New York, Mortimer. It didn't seem right to leave that lovely room empty with so many people needing it. So we advertised, and Mr. Midgley applied. He was so lonely. No kith or kin. We felt so sorry for him. And then when his heart attack came, and he sat there dead in that chair. Remember, Martha? It was like old times. Yes. Grandfather was a doctor, you know. He always had a cadaver or two around the house. Only Teddy insisted that Mr. Midgley was a yellow fever victim and had to be buried at once. So we buried him in Panama. Yes, and he looked so peaceful, didn't he, Abby? Oh, so serene. And we made up our minds right then and there that if we could help other lonely old men find that same peace, we would. So that's, that's how it all started? That man walking in and dropping dead? Oh, well, of course, we realized we couldn't depend on that. Mortimer! Always happening, so... Mortimer, you know those jars of poison that had been up in Grandfather's laboratory all these years? And your Aunt Martha has such a knack for mixing things. Well, dear, for a gallon of elderberry wine, I take one teaspoonful of arsenic, a half a teaspoonful of strychnine, and just a pinch of cyanide. It should have quite a kick. Oh, yes, yes. As a matter of fact, one of our gentlemen found time to say how delicious. Look, look, Andes, I, I don't know how to explain it to you, but you can't do things like that. It's against the law. It's not a nice thing to do. But, well, I mean, well, this has developed into a very bad habit. Mortimer, we don't stop you from doing things you like to do. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. The Sonic Summerstock Playhouse. Once again, our 2015 Sonic Summerstock Playhouse brings you classic theatre, adapted and performed by some of the very best audio players from around the world. I'm David Alt, and with Jack Ward, we are your hosts. Welcome to the Playhouse.
Hello and welcome Sonic Society members to the final entry of Sonic Summer Stock Playhouse, our summer series where some of the best audio drama companies get together in the summer and recreate some great old time radio scripts with their cast. It's been another fantastic season and tonight is our final performance, this time from longtime Playhouse alum, Gypsy Audio. Thanks so much to Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard and Alex Gilmer and everyone from Gypsy for tonight's gala performance. But before we get to this show, I just wanted to thank everyone for their excitement after last week's show about Bookcraft.org. Ginny, Rob, and I are also pretty excited about the possibilities. A marketplace for writers, graphic artists, editors, translators, marketers, formatters, narrators, audio and video editors, and everyone who loves making the art of ebooks or audiobooks. A one-stop shopping where you can create your own account and add for your services, all free. I know Matt Leong has already gotten one gig for his artwork because I'm the one who paid for it. A cover for my newest short story I hope to have out later this week. So go to bookcraft.org and make an account. Make a free ad and let's get the word out to people. I believe writers want to show their best work at Amazon and through other sites. I believe that they want to have the best edited, best looking ebooks out there to rise above the clutter. Bookcraft could be that one place where your book becomes magic. How exciting, how exciting it is for me to know that in a small way, we could connect people who love reading as much as Rob, Ginny, and I do. And to make the next bestseller, or maybe just get a dream book out there for friends and family to read, bookcraft.org. Entirely secure, the payments are totally handled by PayPal, and personal information is secured through encryption. Make a little cash doing what you want to do at home through bookcraft.org or get that dream writing project to magically appear with help from Bookcraft. Now on with the show. Tonight, Gypsy Audio finishes our Playhouse 2015 season with a classic and one of my favorites, Arsenic and Old Lace. Enjoy. Gypsy Audio presents Arsenic and Old Lace. You can ask anybody in that section of Brooklyn, and they will all tell you the very same thing. The neighbors, the minister, Dr. Harper, even O'Hara, the cop on the beat. You mean those two old Brewster sisters? Why, there ain't two sweeter little ladies in the world. Too bad, though, about that nephew of theirs. <laughs> Too bad. He should have... Charge! Follow me, men! Up San Juan Hill after Teddy Roosevelt! Uh, see what I mean? But the Brewster sisters have another nephew, Mortimer. He's a dramatic critic on a New York paper, and he's always considered himself quite sane. Until tonight. And Tabby and Martha, I have news for you. I'm going to marry Elaine Harper. Oh, Mortimer, how nice. Our minister's daughter. Really, Mortimer? Well, we ought to celebrate. Not tonight, darlings. I've got to pick up Elaine and get back to town. I have to cover a play tonight. Well, I do hope it's something you like for once. What's the name of it, dear? Merger will out. I bet I can write the review without even seeing it. I always said you were talented, dear. Same old tripe. When the curtain goes up, first thing you see is a dead body. Well, maybe you won't actually see it. It'll be hidden somewhere, like in this window seat. Then someone will come on, walk in, sort of